Tonight, our special transmission as Israel's war on Palestine enters its sixth month with no end in sight. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Zahar Sayed. Today is the 184th day since the onset of Israel's war. In the past 24 hours, at least 38 Palestinians have lost their lives in Gaza. Palestinians have started returning to destroyed homes in Khan Yunus as most Israeli troops have withdrawn nearly six months after they've invaded the city. Israel has announced the entry of 322 aid trucks into Gaza. It is the highest daily volume since the war started. Conflicting reports surround ceasefire negotiations in Egypt. Egyptian media suggests progress, while Hamas and Israeli officials deny nearing an agreement. Egyptian state-linked media have reported advancements in talks. They say significant progress is being made on key points. However, Israeli sources downplay the optimism. Israel's daily newspaper quotes officials cautioning against premature celebration. It says the deal is not imminent and is urging the public to be patient. The death toll from Israel's war continues to rise. At the time of writing, at least 33,000 207 Palestinians have been killed. 75,933 have been injured. An estimated 8,000 bodies remain buried under the debris of bombed buildings in the besieged territory. Most of the dead are women and children. The death toll in Israel from Hamas's attacks stands at 1,139. The International Court of Justice has commenced two-day hearings concerning Nicaragua's plea for emergency measures against Germany's support for Israel's actions in Gaza. Nicaragua accuses Germany of violating international law by aiding Israel militarily. The plea says Germany is facilitating genocide by defunding the United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees. Judge An Shokat al Hasawene of Jordan is presiding over the case. French legal expert Elaine Pellet is representing Nicaragua. Pellet argues that Germany's actions breached the 1948 Genocide Convention and the 1949 Geneva Conventions. Pellet demands Germany immediate, immediately suspend aid to Israel to avoid complicity in the genocide. Nicaraguan Ambassador Carlos Jose Arguello Gomez has reiterated the country's solidarity with Palestine. The court will reconvene on Tuesday to hear the German delegation's defense. Experts say after six months of relentless attacks on Gaza, Israel's victory remains elusive. Despite claims of targeting Hamas fighters, Israel's forces struggle to control the territory. International consensus suggests Israel will remain involved in Gaza's future. However, without clear plans or agreed-upon goals, the war seems poised to continue with devastating consequences for millions of Palestinians. In November, Israel had claimed clearing Al-Shifa Hospital, Zaytun neighborhood, the Ashafi refugee camp, and the city of Beit Hanun in Gaza. But after a few months, Israeli forces stormed these localities again, claiming that they are still housing Hamas fighters. Israel has mobilized 360,000 reservists in October to fight Hamas. Experts say it is becoming clear that Israel will probably face lingering armed resistance for years to come. Political, political opinions in Israel vary on how to handle the situation. In January, Defense Minister Yov Gallant proposed a U.S.-led multinational group overseeing a civilian administration in Palestine. In February, Netanyahu proposed the complete closure of Gaza's southern border with Egypt, as well as the overhaul of Gaza's civil administration and education. Netanyahu's plan received intense criticism, including Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, and the U.S. The cost of rebuilding Gaza is estimated at $18.5 billion. There is nearly zero effort being made in Israel in this regard. Israel's defense minister Yov Gallant says Israel is fully ready to address any possible threat from Iran. The statement comes after a recent bombing of an Iranian consulate in Syria. The bombing resulted in the assassination of seven Revolutionary Guard members, including high-ranking generals. Iran has accused Israel of orchestrating the attack and vows to retaliate. 
During an assessment at the Defense Ministry's headquarters in Tel Aviv, Gallant said the Israeli military has completed its defensive preparations. Israel is yet to officially claim responsibility for the incident. Canadian community groups are urging Prime Minister Trudeau's government to take immediate action against the killing of seven aid workers in Israel. One of these workers was a Canadian U.S. national. A joint statement issued by mosques, churches and Jewish institutions calls for political sanctions against Netanyahu's war cabinet. The group demands specific actions from Canada, including imposing sanctions, recognizing Palestinian statehood, combating anti-Palestinian racism and ending recruitment for the Israeli Defense Forces on Canadian soil. They say it is Canada's obligation to uphold international law and human rights in the face of escalating violence and disregard for Palestinian lives. And in related news, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has rebuked Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's justification for an airstrike that killed seven aid workers. Netanyahu termed it a tragic incident and typical of war time. Trudeau, however, disagrees. He says there is a need for accountability and protection of aid workers in conflict zones. He is demanding an open investigation into the incident and calling for a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. World Central Kitchen, the NGO to which the victims belonged, echoes Trudeau's demand for an independent inquiry into the attack. Conservative Party leader Pierre Poiliev, accompanied by MP Melissa Lansman, is calling for action against Hamas, blaming it for the current Gaza crisis. Addressing a pro-Israel crowd at the Nathan Phillips Square in Toronto yesterday, he alleged that anti-Semitism is on the rise in Canada. He attributed it to groups, terrorist groups, and pledged to combat it, especially on university campuses. Poiliev expressed support for a peaceful coexistence of Israel and Palestine but insisted on dismantling Hamas first. He said Jews are aboriginals who lived in Israel for thousands of years and will continue to live there for another thousands of years. In a separate event, pro-Palestinian protesters gathered outside the U.S. Consulate General yesterday and marched through downtown Toronto. The Israeli war has driven 85% of Gaza's population into internal displacement. The United Nations estimates 60% of the enclave's infrastructure has been damaged or destroyed. The International Court of Justice accuses Israel of genocide. Last week, the top court called on Israel to do more to prevent famine in Gaza. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not for profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad. Assalamu alaikum.